For me, there's nothing more quintessentially English than a pint of real ale, a comfy pub, and a Saturday lunchtime kickoff. Unfortunately, in the time of COVID, living in Pennsylvania, I can't really get to experience any of those things, although I can try. I can sip from my bottle of Fuller's and watch in the comfort of my own home. The one thing I can do is also reminisce about football from my heyday in the 1990s. You probably have another period of time that you like. Either way, in this episode, we're going to take a look back at the history of English football, and we're going to talk about the memorabilia value. Stick around. Hello and welcome to the Soccer Collectible Show, the channel for the history and value of soccer memorabilia. My name is Jonathan Kastner. I'm an appraiser with National Appraisal Consultants, and I'm the owner of Touchline Appraisals, an appraisal service specializing in the valuation of soccer memorabilia. If you have any soccer memorabilia that need to have appraised, you can go ahead and contact us. Uh, the links for NAC and for Touchline Appraisals are located in the description. This episode we're going to be looking at English football memorabilia, but before we do, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and click the subscribe button below. If you want to understand uh, the value of English football memorabilia, the first thing you need to do is understand a little bit of history. Where did it all start? Just about every ancient culture had some rudimentary form of football, from the Aztecs to the ancient Chinese. But the English were among the first to standardize and modernize the rules of the game in the mid-19th century. Why? Well, there are a combination of reasons. England was among the first nations to industrialize. An organized sport became a necessary distraction for its growing number of industrialized workers. Memorabilia from this period is exceedingly rare. This rule book from Sheffield Football Club in 1860 sold for over 800,000 pounds in 2011. But football didn't just remain in the British Isles. The United Kingdom was a formidable empire. In the early 20th century, the English version of the game spread around the globe via colonization. Its popularity grew partly because football didn't require as much equipment as other games like cricket. Like American sports to Americans, a lot of English sports enthusiasts are proud of the game they feel that they invented. Sentimentality plays a major role in memorabilia value, and the English are very sentimental about their antiques and collectibles. Football is no exception, and they have established sales channels from online vintage shirt sellers, such as classic football shirts, to reputable auction houses like Christie's, Sotheby's, and Grand Bud. English football memorabilia is popular around the world as well. Think of the millions of replica football kits that are sold every year, and think of the popularity of the English Premier League. Leeds United was among the first to sell its replica shirt when they did so in 1975. Okay, so what are the most valuable pieces of English football memorabilia that are out there? For the sake of brevity and understanding, we can divide English football memorabilia into two different periods of time. A period before the 1966 World Cup, in the period after. Of course, I'm oversimplifying a little bit, but just bear with me. When it comes to sports memorabilia, three factors drive value, rarity, quality, and demand. A dinner plate featuring the players from Stoke City in 1925, that item might be rare, but it's not going to have as much a mass appeal as a dinner plate from 1935, uh, which has an image of Sir Stanley Matthews on it. As is the case with memorabilia in other countries, uh, memorabilia from attacking players uh, tends to sell a little bit better than memorabilia from defenders. Match-worn goalkeeping shirts are also very popular. Value is important, but it's not the only reason we collect memorabilia. Many American sports collectors are obsessed with value. Today, baseball collectors are often referred to as investors, and the mark of a wise investor is one who can flip a baseball card. In other words, make a big profit. I like to think that football memorabilia collectors, especially those in England, do it for different reasons. Shirt collectors consider the fashion and the history of the sport. Vintage collectors, for items such as trophies and match-worn memorabilia, well, they do it because of the history. That's not to say that profit isn't a motive, it just isn't on the same scale as it is in the States. Like baseball to many American collectors, history and heritage are hugely important to English collectors. In order to have a better understanding of memorabilia value, it's often a good idea to understand a little bit of history as well. Prior to World War II, Sunderland, Arsenal, and Everton were the best sides. After World War II, that changed. So memorabilia from these clubs 
is among the most valuable from all memorabilia during this period. After the war, until 1966, Liverpool and Manchester United experienced the most success. So memorabilia from these teams in this period is in the greatest demand. As I mentioned, extraordinary events can affect memorabilia value. The 1958 Munich air disaster, which killed eight Manchester United players, makes memorabilia from those victims especially valuable. Memorabilia from the 1966 World Cup is especially valuable because England hosted and won the tournament. Its players have become legends over time. Following the 1966 World Cup, Liverpool went on a tear, winning 10 titles in the next 22 years. Leeds United and Derby County combined for four trophies in the 1970s, so memorabilia from players at these clubs will generally bring more. Nottingham Forest won the league in 1978 and two European Cups, one in 1979 and another in 1980. The achievement of manager Brian Clough and his assistant Peter Taylor cannot be overstated, and memorabilia from this team, from Nottingham Forest, and of Brian Clough and Peter Taylor uh, has appreciated well over time. For the most part, the 1990s were about the success of Manchester United, although Blackburn won the league in 1995 and Arsenal did the same in 1998. You have to love the shirts from this period. With Roman Abramovich's pocketbook, Chelsea started winning the league in the early 2000s. Because of the landmark Bosman ruling in 1995 and the explosion of television revenue from the English top flight, rebranded as the Premier League in 1992, English football started seeing an influx of foreign players and foreign managers. Soon foreign owners came into the mix too. As far as England memorabilia goes, apart from the 1970 World Cup, the 70s were a bit of a dry spell. Minimal success followed in 1982 and 1986, but shirts from these periods are very collectible. The 1990 World Cup team made it to the semifinals, where they were defeated in penalties by eventual champions Germany. This shirt is also popular, and vintage examples have sold for over 200 pounds. England didn't qualify for USA 94, but the team made a big impression at Euro 96, losing in the semis again to Germany on penalties. This is another popular shirt. Just remember that success and drama can increase the value of sports memorabilia. It doesn't have to be Michael Owen's solo goal against Argentina in the 1998 World Cup, or David Beckham's curler against Greece uh, in 2001, or even Deli Ali's uh, winner against Sweden in 2018. Uh, there are plenty of moments in the game, and sometimes we forget about them, uh, that have drama and excitement, and they play a part in increasing the value as well. Anyway, that just about does it for this episode, but I want to thank you for coming along with us. If you have any interesting stories or any collectibles you'd like to share with us, you can email us. The email address is the soccer collectible show, all one word, at gmail.com. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. Take care, everyone. Stay safe.